In the 21st century, it's critical that we understand the role of the environment in infectious disease. For over 100 years, we've successfully understood person-to-person -person transmission. But now with the capability provided by Earth observations, we can investigate the environmental factors that influence infectious diseases. We're, we are currently in the pandemic of um, COVID-19, but also simultaneously, we are in a second pandemic of cholera, the seventh pandemic. As you can see from the data shown here, we have suffered pandemics from early recorded time and will continue beyond 2019. It's important to predict and to have the capacity to predict accurately um, infectious disease onset. Because if we can intervene, as you can see from this chart, we can save lives and prevent cases. If we wait until the pandemic is at its peak, we will have lost the opportunity to um, save, prevent infections, save lives. In fact, in an analysis of um, publications, we find that diarrheal diseases remain a major uh, form of infectious disease globally. In fact, um, it was just um, within the last decade or two that uh, diarrheal disease was the number one killer of infants, um, children under the age of five. Now it's the second um, most serious infectious disease for children under the age of five, second to influenza. Nevertheless, it remains a major pandemic factor. What I'd like to um, demonstrate with the series of slides that show cholera burden for about 40, almost 50 years, between 1970 and 2016. In the early 70s, Asia and Africa, and particularly Indonesia, but the Asian countries were where cholera cases occurred most frequently. You can see from the coloration that um, the orange indicates uh, 10,000 to 20,000 cases. Um, in 1992, a major outbreak occurred in Latin America, actually considered to be influenced by the um, Peruvian current, the El Nino year. Subsequently, as you can see from 2000 onward, Africa became the major source of um, cholera infections. And um, outbreaks in Central Africa have been very, very severe and heavy. We find that um, in 2010, there was an outbreak in Haiti. And subsequently, in 2015, 16 and 17 in Yemen. Uh, the epidemic in Yemen uh, was catastrophic with millions of uh, cases in that period of time. And then um, in uh, 2017, Hurricane uh, Matthew raged through the Caribbean and uh, cholera cases occurred in uh, Haiti once again. What we find is that uh, the cholera uh, epidemic is global, clearly and in, in most cases related um, to environmental factors. Um, I can, shown here is from um, 72 on it, as we had um, seen earlier. The uh, studies that we have done uh, of cholera globally, um, show that the endemic cholera is along the coastal areas. This is linked to uh, the influx and mixing of freshwater and seawater. We were able to discern a differentiation of cholera into epidemic, which occurred um, um, in a single major outbreak per year. And then in Bangladesh particularly, a mixed mode cholera with a spring peak 
related to seawater intrusion into the river, river system, into the Gangetic Delta. And then the fall peak associated with the um, subsequent effects of um, the um, heavy rainfall associated with the monsoon. So endemic cholera persists throughout the year. The epidemic cholera will occur sporadically, not necessarily every single year, but it'll be devastating in terms of the numbers of infected individuals and um, deaths. We started our work, uh, collaboration with um, colleagues at NASA and with funding provided by NASA uh, in the 2000 uh, period of time, our first publication um, using Landsat, which was very helpful because it allowed us to be able to utilize the measurement of chlorophyll, sea surface temperature, and sea surface height, and to relate it in um, um, cholera outbreaks in Bangladesh. We have moved on with real-time uh, regional cholera prediction in uh, 2020, um, having done a prototype of cholera prediction models in 2015. So we have progressed from the early studies in uh, 1980 to 2000 to very sophisticated uh, assessment and prediction uh, currently. So the model that we developed initially, simply relating sea surface temperature, sea surface height, chlorophyll, uh, salinity factors um, with the outbreaks and being able to predict uh, cholera in uh, Bangladesh and based uh, on our studies in the US, uh, the Haitian epidemic as well. And so the epidemic mode of cholera um, is, is a sporadic outbreak of cholera and usually occurs following flooding um, as um, occurs in the post-monsoon period of time in Bangladesh and uh, India. So in the rainfall, from the studies we have done, utilizing data from historical records of cholera in India from 1823 to about 1923 to 1930, we were able to um, take the data, analyze it, and determine that there's a strong relationship between a very warm temperature, uh, usually for a month or two, followed by a heavy rainfall, well above the normal uh, rainfall or precipitation. And then when this occurs in a region where there's poor sanitation, lack of safe drinking water, the risk of cholera is extremely high. So those are the fundamental principles of the models that we have developed. In 1915, there occurred um, a heavy a hurricane, Matthew, that um, moved from the Caribbean across Haiti and up along the um, east coast of the United States. Uh, this is the, the data from 2016, uh, uh, Hurricane Matthew. We did use the model to do a retrospective analysis of the factors associated with Hurricane Matthew. And um, our predictive models showed the high risk, as you see on the left. On the right are the actual cases where they occurred um, in, in, um, in Haiti. And so with this retrospective analysis, we were actually able to show that we can predict where uh, the risk will be the highest for the outbreak of cholera. Now, we subsequently in 2017, when there was a massive cholera epidemic in Yemen, we chose to do again a retrospective analysis of the outbreak in Yemen, we wrote a paper, it was published, and it was picked up by the Scientific American uh, with a small paragraph about the work published in Scientific American about December of um, 2017. A colleague 
in England read that article, was intrigued because he was working with the British aid agency in Yemen and uh, called us um, with, in a conversation in January and asked if we could collaborate, if we could provide risk maps for Yemen so that medical supplies, physical uh, physicians, personnel, and uh, access to safe drinking water could be pro provided to those regions of Yemen of highest risk. This would be effective uh, in, and uh, very efficient, as well as cost savings in being able to locate what was needed for medical treatment um, of cholera at the time when one could expect the outbreak to occur. This proved to be very successful. In fact, there was a significant reduction of cholera in 2018. And we have continued to provide um, monthly prediction risk maps for Yemen used now by UNICEF, British aid agency, and done in collaboration with the British Meteorological Agency and with funding and support of NASA, which has been extraordinarily effective. We now have um, been able to provide a routine, regular cholera prediction uh, done collaboratively at the University of Florida uh, between the University of Maryland and the University of Florida with the active participation and funding of NASA. The uh, ability to utilize the cholera prediction maps modified for COVID has proven to be extremely effective and very exciting. Here I show um, Ethiopia uh, COVID risk time series um, and the um, utilization of the cholera risk map. Um, here is the cholera forecast uh, for March 2017, specific areas indicating high risk in this case in 2017, um, you can see the highest risk are in the regions that are colored um, orange and yellow. The, um, here I would like to, um, unfortunately that does not show, let's move on to the next slide. Um, these are the um, correlations of the cholera risk map uh, shown um, the specific areas we are now currently studying, uh, the environmental parameters and um, the, uh, the risk of cholera. Uh, taking the algorithm uh, developed for cholera and applying it with parameters of uh, socio-demographical indicators, density, population, economic stability, um, age, whether it's mostly a very young or, or an elderly population, um, health practices, and um, wastewater analysis. These factors taken together put into the um, cholera prediction model has proven to be very successful for predicting the risk of COVID-19. And shown here, is the um, dynamics of the virus, the likelihood that there is a COVID-19 case um, increasing between June 7th to June 21st in this uh, analysis that was done uh, for the state of Florida county by county. Um, similarly, for the entire United States, uh, one can focus uh, as shown in the two charts, in this case for Orleans County, in Louisiana, the risk uh, time series map for August to November 2021, and the upper is the Anne Arundel County map for Maryland um, at the same period of time. And you can see the risk going higher uh, at the time the risk was dropping in Orleans. In other words, the environmental par parameters are very important. Um, as well as the other factors that are included in the algorithm to provide the predictive capacity. To sum up, it is really important to understand 
that there are very powerful links between climate, weather systems, and human health. If you have lack of proper sanitation, lack of access to safe drinking water, and, and the factors associated with climate systems, um, built into the model, we can very effectively, with this powerful collaboration with NASA, to be able to um, um, predict infectious disease, cholera and COVID-19. And I would like to um, acknowledge the extraordinary cooperation, collaboration of Dr. Antar Judler at the University of Florida, Dr. Anwar Haq at the University of Maryland, and specifically the funding agencies of the UK International um, Aid Agency, um, the National Science Foundation, NIH, but a very, very important thank you to NASA, um, the Air and Health Quality Program has proven to be an extraordinary partner in this um, fascinating research that we've been able to carry out. Thank you.